and we are live. I'll do the present to everyone thing. I got that down. All right. Let me wait for a couple people to, a few people to come in. Hey, Corey, how are you? Dylan, how are you, Corey? Let's see. Ready for Atlanta. I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to meeting you, Corey. We're gonna have some fun over there. I've just been goofing around with this. Gotta go nice and slow. Don't wanna don't wanna overtax the thing. So I'm I'm looking forward to the uh, I'm looking forward to Atlanta. I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to uh, Well, I was gonna say I'm looking forward to the show. Ah, eh, the show's okay. <laughs> but you can see the show in two hours. It's the people. Uh well. Now that I'm here, Dave, why don't you introduce yourself to the folks? I'm Dave. <laughs> <laughs> that should be sufficient. I see uh, Steve Nealon from Harnell Media is in the house. Hey, Steve, how are you? So if anybody, well, everybody's, most of you have probably heard it before, but uh, if you're a maker and you're using GoDaddy or one of these other little... Uh, you know, cheap website things. Uh, think about switching over to Harneal Media. He's got uh, wonderful sites, custom made for the maker, or he'll custom make it for you. And uh, you'd be surprised at the prices. We're not talking. We're talking a four thousand dollars site for uh, for near GoDaddy prices, or cheaper in some cases. Sell your wares. It'll set you up with a store. Yeah. Well, we got ourselves a little drag chain here. Uh, a little drag chain. A little, a little drag chain. Yeah, we got ourselves a. Uh, it's. Uh, yeah, somewhere in the neighborhood of one inch by two inches interior dimensions. So uh, I think you could put two of my drag chains inside your drag chain. <laughs> yeah. What's What's funny is I I was looking at the, the other day. I was uh, I was looking online for prices of drag chains, and I found this one. I go, seven millimeter by seven millimeter. Who Who in the world? Or is a drag chain that tiny? And now I just, when I came in here, I, I just looked over to my uh, engraver. Let's see if I can rotate the camera to this little area down here. Uh, don't know if you could see it over here. Yeah. But uh, there's a little 7 millimeter by 7 millimeter drag chain. Yeah. <laughs> It's amazing, but yeah. So, for those of you wondering, or those of you that haven't been following along, I, um, yeah, I, um, it's funny you say that, Corey. I was, I have a three D printer, but it's it was much faster for me to cut this thing out with the CNC machine than it was to, to well. I'm going on. Let me see how many links we got. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, thirty, 
six, twelve, eighteen, twenty. All right, so we have fifty-six links. I don't think I'll use. Well, I won't use all of them on this strip, but I will need more for this strip. So I'm just doing this this little strip today, and. Uh, if you think about it, it's uh, if you put that 3D printer to work, <laughs> you're going to be there for ages, uh, waiting for for the thing that you're definitely better off buying it if if you're going to do the 3D printer. This this didn't take that long. It took about half an hour for a three foot section, so yeah, it's a decent size. All right, so. Let's get to work. I have most of the pieces cut out here. And um, I cut myself some little braces that I'm going to put, I mean, little ex extension pieces that I'm going to put right here. Uh, and there's, and uh, along this whole area, there's going to be an angle like this. So when it's in the uh, horizontal position, the, uh, the, the track will lay flat on it. What's in the vertical position, the, uh, hopefully it'll ride on this. I may have to offset it a little or put some kind of a, of a chamfer on it. We'll, we'll, see how, we'll see how it works. Oh, yeah, definitely the, uh, the three millimeter drag chains will, on, on uh, 3D printers will be a, a no-brainer there. So, let's do some of this mounting. I'm hoping Mr. Mike Mertzke joins us a little later. But uh, that depends on his schedule there. So I cut this around 6 o'clock and I... Uh, Decided to paint it before the show, so eh, luckily it's it's the the paint's not wet, but not close to it. I'm not going to glue these this part on. I am, however, going to glue the other pieces together. Dave, let me know if anybody's saying anything in the chat. I will. Or asking questions or whatever. This thing's as solid as as solid as the gap. There's something to be said. I'll say this, because a lot of people say, oh, should I buy a... When, when, it comes to, when it comes to purchasing your own CNC, I mean, uh, Dave's advice always is, it depends on what you need. Because if you need a 10 inch by 10 inch machine, just to make some little tiny plaques, then then probably a Dremel machine may suit you. My advice, no matter what, personally, is don't buy one of those machines. But uh, a lot of people ask. Uh, a lot of people have trouble deciding between, uh, or a few people have trouble deciding between a Gatton and a Garage Works. And in all deference to you, Dave, I, I got to say, the feeling after the, the 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 pride and the and the well pride is the only word and I know yeah, seven deadly sins but of building this thing uh, it's yeah you're building the other one too but it's just not the same it's this is a joy.
Yeah. I I What's that? I was going to say, I kind of get the same, you know, feeling of pride when somebody buys a kit and gets it all put together and then sends me pictures. And especially when they show me pictures of the stuff they make and they just, you know, yep. can't believe it's that, that they're making the kind of stuff they're making with it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I probably won't have this built, uh, rather, I'll have it built and it's functional, but the spoil board takes time, all the, all the little features takes time, and, and uh, frankly, you know, what I tell people, I don't want to run this thing without the uh, spoil board, because I, frankly, I don't want to dig into my, make a mistake and dig into my surface, but um yeah i'm not i'm not gonna have probably i mean with my schedule i'm not going to be able to put the spoil board in by tomorrow which is the um uh, actually it's next week i might actually have it made by then Corey yes, has a question for you in the chat hobby yeah go for it he says, you may have said it, but what was your plan for making the Colossus? Any projects in the queue planned to take advantage of the reach? <laughs> well, strangely enough, I just... All right, I'll give you a brief history. I got time. I'm not doing anything but screwing stuff together. Originally, originally the plan was... Um, back in March, I had decided uh, that I wanted to build a, I hesitate to use the word disposable, but I wanted to build a CNC for the purpose, uh, a 24 by 36, similar to the one I have, for the purpose of sticking it in the trailer and working at Santa's Enchanted Forest doing selling products you know in in the in the in the trailer i have a I have an 8 by 12 trailer concession trailer well santa's the the owners of santa's i know them very well and they gave me this wonderful opportunity last year to try out my uh, it, life gets in the way and i i didn't have it built uh, in time i i didn't have the parts all together to build it building's quick it's getting all the stuff together you know, you're doing it piecemeal, taking your time. I didn't want to invest in a ridiculously expensive machine. And then, God forbid, it gets stolen because, you know, it's a carnival atmosphere. It gets everything. So when I say disposable, I just mean uh, I wanted to go for something in a, in a price range that, God forbid, it got uh, damaged or stolen. Well, damaged, I could rebuild it. But stolen then i then i not that they know what it is i could replace it uh and i went to santa's last year it was a complete bust those are the they they gave me they they uh the the owners had a they gave me a great deal they they said try it out we don't want you you know giving us a bunch of money or signing a contract for thousands of dollars if it's not going to work out for you so try it out i tried it out on one of the busiest weekends and unfortunately that particular crowd is is not the crowd for this type of uh work and i had everything from eloy and i were there so it was from the most rustic to the fancy fanciest custom piece we we ended up getting for those of you who know the story, 15 bucks uh, a day of, of product, of, of sales. So there goes that idea. But I'm still committed to building the Gatton. And, well, that's the beauty of it. If you have the kit, it's just a matter of buying more wood and more aluminum angles, and that's it. Well, and, well the rods are the rods. There's, they come in six-foot pieces. And you can build it as large, as big as you want, up to six feet or so. So then the next plan was, I have a, funny how these things happen. I have a uh, 
neighbor who has uh, a stroller concession, you know, baby strollers, you know, they rent them there. And he was uh, looking to upgrade his strollers. And I said, well, you know, if I build this machine, I can cut them out. I can build it bigger and I can cut these, uh, these strollers. And that was the plan. I even made a little mock-up. He loved it. He was crazy about it. But then, you know, sure, sure as you know, it's, there's always something that gums up the works. He found out he couldn't get those things insured because the baby safety industry, it's, it's a mess. Yet they insure the ones coming in from China. It doesn't make any sense to me. And, and, and these are, would be beefier, but well, there's a lot of hoops and hurdles that you have to go through to become a manufacturer and stuff. And that's my business days are over when it comes to, you know, jumping through hoops. So, uh, so that, uh, idea, you know, went by the wayside. However, the thought, the, that little spark was still left in me. I go, ah, oh, I want to, I want to build something. So in case I, I do want to build something large or build not only large, but I could actually build multiple small pieces. If I'm doing something uh, with serious production, I could split this up into, say, six sections. And this could be running that whole half, room, 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 while I'm here taking off the wood and putting new one, and it'll be putting on this. I mean, granted, uh, you know, or, or, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's not like it's... It's gonna be that quick it's like click click you know, i mean if you know if you know how fast the cnc runs on average you're talking you know something this big you're cutting anywhere from half an hour to a couple days uh depending on how intricate uh but there's the there there's the advantage i could put a whole bunch of pieces in there rather than be always watching and waiting for one piece to finish let's say the piece took an hour and a half i'll set up a camera go in do what i have to do and i'll cut six pieces and those six pieces will take 12 hours no problem or nine hours whatever and uh you know so so there are advantages to so that let me grab my glue here can't walk and chew gum at the same time so in the end, the reason why I built this machine is because I wanted to. The purpose for this machine is to make me happy. <laughs> and uh, it seems to be fulfilling its purpose. I'm all giddy inside and all that. But Any other questions there, Dave? Um, no, I don't see any more right at the moment. Corey says he sure has learned a lot and enjoyed watching it come together. I appreciate it. I mean, I, I got to tell you, that's... I I enjoy the notoriety, of course, but more than anything else, I really enjoy, I mean, like this, the conversation back and forth, talking to somebody about, about you know, something that, that I'm passionate about, is a, it's a win-win scenario. So... So I was telling Dave, I cut these pieces. What I did was I cut, uh, I had some extra wood. I, I didn't want to ruin a whole, uh, I didn't want to cut a whole strip of plywood. 
uh, you know, long ways. I had a piece that was 48 inches tall. So I cut 48 inches. Oh, sorry. I cut 48 inches and then I cut 34 inches. The 48 and the 34 make 82, which is two inches longer than the outer edge here. And um, that way, I mean, they're, they're, they're overlapped. It's not, it doesn't take much weight. I've got them screwed together, so it's not, uh, it's not that big of an issue as far as uh, bending or flexing or anything like that. Not that it matters. It's holding a few wires in a drag chain, so. Yeah, it's not, not a lot of weight there. Yeah. yeah, not to mention the drag chain itself is pretty stiff as, as, uh, as well. Yeah, I suppose I could use clamps. Nah. Some glue on my cat. Can't do that. <laughs> Sacrilege. So I'll uh, I'll eventually put a uh, not eventually probably this week I'll put an edited version of of the uh, of the drag chain uh, being carved out. Edited version of this, the installation. All right. We're good with this, but I do have one that I want to put in here. There was a clamp here earlier, and I couldn't put the screw in. For the PS de resistance. I don't even know what that means. But somebody who speaks French out there can <laughs> translate. <laughs> I don't know what the words mean, but I know how to use them. Michael Chipser's in the house. Hey, Mr. Chipser. Let's see, how far away from this do I put it? You know, I could put it all the way at the end. But if I did that, that's a little too far away. I could actually put it, I mean, butt up close to it. Let me see what I got as far as the measure. Oh, yeah, let's... Uh, Center. A little better. No, that's not the center. That's the center. All right, so. Equidistant from the edges. So how are you doing, Michael? Let's see here. I think I'll go one and a half from either side.
Luckily, I have saw a piece of that. What do I have? Actually, that works out perfect. It's a little close. Put another three quarter in. How do you like my uh, spacer method, Dave? Just grab whatever piece happens to come along. One and a half, three quarter, that works. Yeah, that works. That looks good. That looks good there. countersink, the pilot, and the screw itself. I don't even think I need more than one screw, really. Ah, oh, that's used. Nothing much, Mike. Just putting the um, the drag chain on. Michael Chipster is asking a question here, Javi. He says, any current plans for the beast to take advantage of the size? Any plans to do what? For the beast to take advantage of its size. Well, nothing yet. I haven't really, um, I haven't really had it. Um, as I was telling Corey, the reason why I built it is because I can. Um, the, uh, it's just, uh, a matter of time. Actually, I was thinking of one thing. It, it, it'll have to wait a little while until I can get some, uh, I mean, with the Atlanta show and everything and, and, uh, the process of, uh, I just finished buying a new business. I got a lot of expenses and, uh. I would like to buy a few pieces of plywood and some electronics and do the, uh, Bob Claggett has a uh, uh, arcade machine that I've been, you know, it's in the back of my mind. I got to build it. And uh, but none of this desktop stuff. I want a full size one. Yeah. And I can easily do that with, with this. I mean, uh, it'll be probably a six foot Actually, it doesn't even have to be six foot. The the board could be cut out in the in the machine completely. Because um, what I was thinking originally is, you know, stick the uh, board in, register it, cut half of it, and then flip it around. And you know, if it's registered, it'll it'll be fine. But um, I don't think it'll be uh, an issue. I mean, I don't think it'll be an issue because heck, I'm five seven. I don't need anything that tall. Well, I don't know. Besides, I don't have any room. <laughs> Make room for Holly. Well, there's our little brace. And for those of you who haven't seen yet, I uh, cut these pieces out. And 
And uh, let's see what we got. Oh, yeah, by the way, it goes this way. And uh, I will attach one side to here. And I don't know how it'll work. I'm going to, we're going to see. Um, I'm thinking probably get another piece of extent of wood here. And that's not a bad idea. Let me just do something temporarily. Well, I've got these three holes I could use, so let me uh, do this for the moment. This is not the final product. I'm going to make it look nice and neat, but for now. Corey wants to know what material your drag chain is made out of. The drag chain is made out of quarter-inch plywood from... Lowe's. Um, where's that? Uh, hang on a second. Let me... This is, uh, it's that striped stuff. Let me see. There you go. It's that striped stuff that uh, it's striped on one side and kind of, uh, you know, clear on the other. Uh, I really like, I, I use some of this stuff. Uh, on my camper as the panels inside some of the doors on the RV It stains beautifully. It's got a lot of neat stripes You got to watch it because if you don't apply the stain evenly, you know, you get the stain marks So you gotta well, you gotta know how to stain but uh, <laughs> this is uh Remember I tried the plastic pieces. They were useless. I got a whole bag here Allow me to show you The waste Allow me to show you what gets wasted in an attempt to make a drag chain. So learn from my mistakes. This stuff, it's, uh, it's too rigid. Half of them break when you try to squeeze them in. They're very, very tight. The glue doesn't hold, the CA glue. There are multiple reasons why you should not use uh acrylic uh hdpe may be good to use but how are you going to glue that together you're going to run into the same issues of gluing and if you use ca glue with the tight tolerances you know this thing with wood glue i mean it is just so sweet because you know if if there's any part that that's 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 rough you just you know Undo it, sand it, and do it back together, you're done. So that's uh works with wood is asking, are you planning to add any attachments? Laser, rotational axis, etc. I am planning to do all the bells and whistles. However, uh yes and no. Uh all right. I have a laser, so I'm not planning on putting if I put a laser, it'll be mounted on the side of the machine, uh, offset, because I do have the extra space on the on on either side. Luckily, because the machine's so large, it will not reach. Uh, it'll go from this very end till about somewhere around here. So I actually have I can actually rejigger the the mount. So I have uh, both the laser and the, the, the router on it. And all I have to do is just make sure the bit's off the router and it's good to go. If I wanted, I mean, one of those small little lasers. Professional lasers, I'll invest the time in fixing my machine. All it needs is a couple belts and, uh, and I got to clean off all the tracks from the melted plastic from the fire seven years ago. Yeah, it's been sitting there. I'll get around to it. And uh, now, regarding a lathe, my plans have always been to, I'm going to build the, no, nothing quite this monstrous, maybe 
36 inches. Uh, I don't know. What would lay, uh, as far as lathes go, David, what would you say is like a maximum reasonable size for a, for a lathe, for a regular lathe? Oh, I don't know. I think three foot probably be pretty good. Yeah, I figure three feet. Uh, and what I plan to do is build a an upright unit, building on the Gatton plan. So you could actually take buy a Gatton CNC, and instead of building the table, I'll probably create some plans for something like this, but in the form of a lathe. Dave already has a, a lathe on there and stuff. I'm just going to provide a different version of it, you know. I, I mean, you know, um, I'm not giving you any parts or anything like that. So, so yeah, it's you – know. uh, and, and you've got to buy Dave's plans to build the whole top part. So, <laughs> but I'll tell you, that it, it's, it's, a, it's a reasonable thing to do, and it's, it's nothing more than a fixed base on the bottom that will hold the whole thing. This will not move forward, back and forth. It'll be fixed, but it'll be, um, but it'll rotate. The, uh, the 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 third motor will rotate. It'll only need uh, three instead of four. If you want to build a standalone CNC lathe, like I intend to. Yeah, Steve. Steve Newland says his lathe is thirty-four and a half between centers. How 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 big is it? Thirty-four and a half. Thirty-four and a half. And that's is that a mini lathe or is that a, a uh, that that's that's the that's the big one you have that's right? A pretty good size lathe. If it's thirty yeah. and a half, but yeah. So I mean, so that's a reasonable size. And the beautiful thing about that is uh, you can get away with uh, you know. Th do they sell the lead screws in four feet, Dave? They sell well. McMaster sells them in three foot and six foot. Three and six. Well, if I sacrifice a little and build like a, a 30, 33-inch lathe, I'm trying to think how many, how how much. I probably lose, what, two inches on the... Uh, yeah, it just depends on how big you build. Actually, the... I, no, no, come to think of it, I only need one lead screw. All I would need is one six-foot. I would cut it to to the three foot plus whatever size I need, and the other piece will be for the uh, for the head, and I could make the box a little taller, if, or the same size because seven inches is that's a fourteen inch uh, <laughs> that's a fourteen inch uh, that's seven inch radius is a fourteen inch piece over fourteen inches because you're not going to go all the way down to the yeah I, I think it'll be a good good uh, mix. Let's see what we got here. All right. So let us continue with this. Take off a piece and work on, you know, I like this one better. <laughs> So you get you know, pretty now. Uh, just for all of you that are interested, there it clips on like that, um, and uh, for now I'll leave it there. Clips on like that. Every one of these is removable. Some of them are a little tighter than others. The tolerances are very tight, but the beautiful thing about the flexibility of, uh, of wood is now I can open all these things up, lay my cable in there, and uh, you wouldn't be able to do this with the plastic one. The plastic one is just a pain, and you certainly shouldn't do it one-handed. All right, enough of this goofing around. Let's see what I do here. I am going to try separate this one so I get the hole and then just out of curiosity see what happens here. All right. Screw. I'm just kind of curious to see where, where the uh, 
where it ends up. I'm doing yeah I'm screwing it into the, the wood just to um, I do have the design for the pieces that that end up uh, on there but right now I'm just seeing the uh, Now we'll see what we need to adjust, because there's always adjustments. Yeah. I'm going to have to find a way to separate it, because it's, it's exactly what I thought was going to happen, is I'm going to need a sort of a chamfer, or actually what I might do is... Uh, as I drop my keyboard again, um, we'll figure it out. Just want to make sure that there you go. I'm at the end. All right, now I wanted to check the distance. Got a kink over here, that's no big deal. I can sand that down. All right, there you go. Ox in the shelf is on the house. It's somewhat of a successful test. This one here is a little bit uh, tight, this one here is a little bit tight, but uh, no biggie. Again, when it's in the, and I'm not going to bring it down right now, but when it's in the horizontal position, none of this is going to be an issue because this is going to just, uh, the, the gravity is going to take it. This is a, is a, well, it's not really a problem because what I'll do is I'll raise this here and I'll screw it down here because it's not going to go farther than that. So this is the last piece of the, of the puzzle, if you will. Let me just put a quick little. Javi, we got an ox in the shop in the house. Sweet. How's it going, Drew? And I just wanted to give kudos to uh, Drew for that last video where he's showing the uh, how he built his uh, checkout stand. That was a oh, yeah. very cool video. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, if you guys uh, haven't checked out uh, Drew Walks in the Shop, go over to his channel. And so, let's see what happens here. This has to be straighter too. Hang on. Yeah, 
this is this is going to be an issue for the vertical. I'm going to have to design something to uh, Yeah, that's the problem with those dead gum vertical machines. Well, the thing is, if this would the drag chain is a success because this would happen with a with a uh, with the other drag chain as well. With uh, now, what I could do. is I'm thinking if I angle it this way and it'll always be at 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 a 45 degree angle at the most yeah this um If anybody has any ideas, because I don't want to be stuck just uh, operating in one or another. I mean, uh, you know, I could always just go vertical and have a nice day, but that's not the purpose of the machine. <laughs> yeah, the family picture idea is is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I, I like that. I like that video of this. Well. Yeah, this all works out very well. Oh, that's the end. You think it might work even a little better when you get some wires in it? No, actually, it'll it'll likely work worse. Um, because the weight of the wires will bring this down some more. What happens is there's there's just enough there's just enough flex. Yeah, I can even if I hold it right here, which which is not a bad idea. There's well, that seems to be working. Yeah. You know what I could do, and that's probably what. I, yeah, it's still at the very end. If I can manage to angle this side up like this, I think that might do it. I think that might do it. But that's that's a big if, because we're talking cables. And two water hoses eventually are going to be going in here. That's a lot of weight pulling that thing down when it's extended this way. Yeah. Corey, I think, has a good idea, too. He says, what would happen if you made it a link or two tighter? So it looks like, you, looks like you're a little long there to me. Well, uh, yeah, well I'm, not, I'm not done yet here. <laughs> Right there, it's already bowing this, this, uh, I don't know if you guys can see with, with, uh, yeah, but it's, it's bending the heck out of this because the circle is too tight. You got to have ex, uh, extra circle. Um, did you mean just, did you mean just, uh, do it from, from just from here? Or I mean, I could attach it, it. Well, this part makes no difference. Because it doesn't move. It's here for decoration. Here is, is where it starts. Because when this goes all the way to the end, this is this is the, uh, the final point. Now, if I can manage to, but if I can, if I can manage to have it at that angle, then that would be great. I am. It's possible if, if I, if I make these little ramps, little wedges. 
You're getting lots of suggestions over in the chat here. Yeah, please. I'm I'm open to all of them. Let me see. Pastor says, uh, well, let's see. Steve, uh, Steve says, extend the Z block and add angle to it. Andrew Hegg says, on the back of the Z, make the mount, make right. a mount 12 inch or so to help support. Let's see here. On the back of the Z, make the mount 12 inches or so long to help support uh, the. What's that? Wait, wait, wait. Make a mount. Oh, you mean something like uh, sticking out of here with some kind of a rubber band or something? I mean, I don't know what you mean because the thing is, I don't know if Andrew was here when it was in, but when it's in. By the way, uh, Steve uh, Misher, I believe, uh, the, the drag chain weighs... Uh, it's minimal. It's it's we're talking. See the the issue is this piece is what has to be held up higher and higher and higher as it goes in here. This this the weight of this will constantly be rubbing on this edge. I can champ for the edge. But it, uh, I was thinking of uh, if I angle this up from here, but then that, that depends on all these links not coming apart because you see that comes apart and, and uh, you know, I'll, I'll have to put a stronger link in there. But if I can aim it up and put little wedges here so as it slides in, it goes up. But there's no guarantee because, remember, this will just – come out this way some more uh, and and get stuck and you know get stuck like this um, the dry, the chain is very light Steve that's in fact the wires away much more than the chain the drag chain is uh, somewhere in the uh, let's see I used a total for this of about half a sheet of plywood quarter inch ply so whatever half a sheet of plywood weighs half that because there was pretty much a lot of waste not a lot of waste but I would say and that's not not a lot of weight that's not a lot of weight at all I mean you're talking about a quarter to a third of a sheet of plywood and I mean I could lift one of those quarter inch plies with two fingers the whole four by eight sheet um, the wires and more so the two the two tubes the two hoses that are going in there to, to run the um, the water in and out of the um, spindle which is why I made this thing one inch by two and a half uh, is what's going to weigh everything down it's not going to be an issue in the horizontal position Yeah. And I would, I, I, I'd actually consider, you know, I'm, I, I'm going to try something. I'm going to try putting a, a, a board here, a triangular. Um, I'm going to try putting a, putting a 45 degree board here, sticking this out some more, and having it at a 45 degree angle. It's possible that that will, that that will work. A bit better. No guarantees. It's already nine o'clock. Anybody has any more suggestions? Hey, I'm all ears. The white block on the back of the Z, make it longer horizontally to the left. Oh, you mean this one way out this way? Um, I mean, this is just a temporary block. Uh, uh, this is not going to go here because I actually have to put the wires. I'm going to do a, another little drag chain from here to to this thing. You know, I like to have the this one covered. Um, just 
wondering. Yeah, because the issue is this thing on this side, I'm, I'm still not completely sure what, what Andrew's saying. If I, if I had a block to come way out to this end, it would still, yeah, it'd still catch. It would still barely catch, but the problem is, well, there's two problems. Number one is, it's going to stick way out on the, on the side. And uh, the other issue is, um, that uh, again, when we put all the wires in, it's gonna bend the heck out of this thing. This thing was meant to take, it's meant to take these kind of forces, which is not a problem, you know, and then obviously curl in, but it's meant to take these kind of forces, not these. These, it will, it, it, there is a little bit of play here, as you can see. And it, there has to be, or it wouldn't move. And uh, with wood, with it being wood and swelling and not swelling, I mean, this a plastic drag chain will be the same thing. Nick, are you? I don't know. I had to step away for a minute. Are you seeing the comment Andrew Hague's making? Uh, Does the white block. I guess that block of wood you got on the back of the Z make it yeah. longer and horizontally to the left. Um, so who's left? Uh, that way? Uh, yeah, I think that way is the way he's talking about. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was thinking about that. Um, and then now that's what I was just saying is, number one, I can't make it too long because as it is, this is as far as I want to go on on the machine because, I mean, I've I've got other tools that are going to go there. And well, right now I've got other tools there, so I can't I can't put it bigger than that. I don't want it to stick out any farther than than it is already. Um, I'm just, uh, I mean, the, the other option, no, the other option, that's not an option. Yeah. The other option is, let me think. Now my mind is really, is reeling with some crazy ideas. I'm actually thinking of some kind of a, stand in a rubber band system that that moves along with this thing and that's not a bad idea because when you think about it let's see no you can't do it that way damn it would be nice but um Uh, yeah, that's, well, that would be an idea, Corey, that, that's, that's, I hadn't thought of that. That's a great idea. I mean, it's, a, it's a great idea. It's just, uh, Corey is saying integrate a, a cable system into the pulley system, which would work except for the fact that I would need, uh, it, it, it wouldn't be practical because number one, I'd have, uh, it, it runs the risk of the, of the rope crimping into the, I mean, I could always do an extra pulley and, uh, and get a little intricate there, but then we're talking about a wire going, it still has to span this, this, this thing across. If I put all the well, there's only one wire, well, one wire and two tubes that go here. One, one cable and two tubes. Um, I 
Yeah, I think I think the best bet is if I put some wedges progressively uh, angled, and I'm going to try that out and see how it works. Yeah, I think that'll be the best bet. That'll be the next step. Yeah, because uh, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't finish my thought, Corey. The other, the only other problem with this is you're going to have if if let's say the wires go directly to here, you're going to have wires, uh, you know, dangling a, a wire dangling from a pulley here, and you got. We're talking an 11 foot ceiling. So at, at its bottom most point, it's a foot off the ground. That's 10 feet of cable plus another 10 feet plus the, the footage going in. That's like 30 feet of, of uh, I, I don't, I don't want to run that many feet of cable with the, uh, to the step promoters. You're going to get some major, major data errors. Not to mention the, uh, those little aquarium pumps are not meant for a uh, 11 foot lift. <laughs> for the for the water pump although once it's up there it really wouldn't matter but <laughs> where it runs on a track keep it held tight to the back okay I mean I'll, I'll run it again so you guys can see it but from here to here all of that curls in so there is nothing to hold it to here. There's nothing to raise it. This will drop. And because it's dropping, it's hitting against this thing. And if I don't have this here, it'll hit against this thing. Uh, it'll, it'll, it'll drop against the rail. I mean, this will drop. That's the other thing. This right now, I'm pushing it this way with this thing, and it's causing a heck of a strain on it. Going this way is fine because it's dropping off the the thing. Um, yeah, this is already this has already caused so much of a strain that that piece is is broken off, but. Uh, Let's say I were to have that there. I have to depend on every single one of those links not breaking. And there, it catches right there. One, two, three, four, five. In, uh, in a matter of uh, eight links, it'll droop. And, and we're talking, I have it angled. It's going up a quarter inch and down a quarter inch. So we're talking about a half inch span in. Uh... Yeah, Le Leroy Mater's saying flip the chain 90 degrees, but I, I don't think he realizes you're doing that for a reason so that when you run yeah. the hose all, it'll be running the yeah. right way. The chain 90 degrees would be great if I only ran it vertical, but I'm running it horizontal as well, which again would be the same problem the other way. Now, now, what was that? Lefty, was that? Or who was that? Oh, oh Leroy. Leroy. Uh, yeah, man, my eyes are going, really, they are. I read Lefty. <laughs> yeah, Leroy, uh, what, what I was thinking of doing, let me see how it would work. I'm just going to hold it here and let me see if I can manage to do this without having the whole chain fall apart. What I was thinking of doing was angling it. Let's try the old angle method. See if that'll work. I don't want to lose my keyboard again. 
I have dropped that keyboard and it's exploded like three times already. You're going to have to hurry up. It's almost past my bedtime. All right. I won't be, I won't be long, Dave. <laughs> I mean, it is after nine already. Yeah, I'll, uh... All right, that'll hold. Uh, hey, worth a shot. Let me see what happens. I want to angle it that way, but if I do it this way, I'm, I'm just kind of curious myself. Because again, I gotta I gotta lift it up, so it's gotta go both ways. <laughs> If I can build a 90 degree mount, I think this is the best bet. It's going all the way to the end. I mean, a 45 degree mount. Yeah, that'll do it. Okay, cool. Well, folks, we solved the problem. There you go. If it's if it's running vertical or if it's running at uh, at a diagonal, well, diagonal will be perfect. I'm gonna have to do a little extension and put it over this, and then if it's running on the other side, it won't drop. It won't drop that way much. So there you go. Okay, what do we got here? Yeah, that's another idea, Corey. Uh, he says to make an adjustable, uh, an adjustable uh, thing, so it's ninety degree or, or horizontal. Only problem with with making it adjustable is, well, it's not too much of a problem except you're you're at one corner, you're twisting the wires at ninety degrees, and and I don't want to be. I want to put as little wear and tear on the wires as possible. I think this is the best bet, and I'm going to see if I, uh, I'll create a little, uh, uh, a little adapter for this, and I think that'll work out best. Now comes my other dilemma. How in the world do I manage to stick one of these drag chains on the side there where I barely have space to walk? <laughs> anyway. Well, Dave, um... You off already, or uh, did you uh, did you drop out already, or are you still there? Yep, I guess he's uh, he's muted. But uh, let's see. Uh, extend the horizontal shaft for the drag outwards with a thin piece. Yeah, and uh, hinge in a pin. <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, that's it for that's it for us. So uh, now I know what I got to do. I'm gonna redesign this. I'm gonna put an angle on this side, an angle on this side, and just put one uh, one piece. Tie it to that, and it should it should be fine. You still there, Dave? I'm here. Yeah. All right. Well, good night, everyone, and thank you for dropping in. My little... Uh... It's nice to know we got it solved anyway. That worked out real well. I will catch you all later. Thank you for stopping by, and uh, have a wonderful uh, week. If anybody's interested, tomorrow I'll be doing a three-dimensional sign 
uh, Harneal Media sign uh, on the CNC using Aspire and all the 3D functions therein. Good night.